Howdy and welcome back. So I thought it'd be useful to go over how to deploy Activity Overlord into the wild. This episode will cover deployment to Heroku, a self-described cloud application platform. Heroku makes it really easy to deploy Node apps without a lot of the overhead typically associated with deployment. Although this episode will concentrate on Heroku, I plan on covering other platforms in future episodes. First, let's look at the current stack of technologies used by Activity Overlord. I'm running OSX Mountain Lion locally on a MacBook Pro. I've got Node installed, and Sales, of course, runs on top of that. Our models, currently the user model, uses a MongoDB database also running locally on Mountain Lion. And finally, we store our sessions and sockets in memory. To do this deployment, the stack of technologies is going to change. For example, instead of running locally on OSX Mountain Lion, Node and Sales will run on an instance of the hardware and software provided by Heroku. Looking at the Heroku docs, Node.js runs on instances of Ubuntu 10.04. Next, instead of our current local MongoDB database, we'll create a new instance of the database on a hosted solution provided by MongoHQ. Finally, we'll move our in-memory socket and session store to Redis, and specifically redis to go hosted by Heroku as well. So you'll first need to create an account on MongoHQ. Once you have an account and are logged in, create a new hosted MongoDB instance using the sandbox option. Although it says this option isn't for production, it works for the purposes of our project. Next, I created a user for the database that we'll use to authenticate in our app. So I want to incorporate this hosted database in my local instance of Activity Overlord before we move Activity Overlord to Heroku. And we do this by changing the local JS file. First, however, let's do a bit of review. Our local configuration of MongoDB uses local.js within the config folder, while adapters.js is completely commented out at the moment. Note also that local.js overrides anything contained in the adapters.js file. Also recall that local.js is part of .gitignore, so the file will not be saved to Git or our repo. The impact of this is that anything sales relies on in terms of configuration in local.js will not be part of the deployment unless we provide for it somewhere else in the code or by using environment variables prior to deployment. Before we address the deployment issues, let's first go into the code and make a few changes to local.js to use our new MongoHQ instance. We no longer need the host, user, password, and database attributes because they're combined in a new attribute called URL. I'll copy and paste the URL from the MongoHQ interface and then insert the username and password I created earlier for the database. Let's see if this worked. I'll go into the terminal and lift Activity Overlord. Next, I'll create a new user and Great, looks like things are working. So I'll go back into MongoHQ and into the user collection, and there's my new user. To start things off, I'll change my admin attribute to true. Now I'm gonna go back and log into this account, and great, I have an admin user set up. Okay, now let's deploy to Heroku. If you don't already have an account on Heroku, go ahead and create one now. Next, you'll want to install the Heroku tool belt, which can be found here. The Heroku tool belt contains the Heroku client for creating and managing Heroku apps. Finally, you'll want to log into Heroku from the terminal. So let's go to the terminal and type Heroku login. This is going to ask us for our Heroku credentials. And the first time you run it, it's also going to set up your public SSH keys. Now, don't worry if you don't already have one. Heroku will walk you through setting one up. So now that we have an account, we've got the tool belt installed, and we've logged in from the terminal, we want to go back to the Heroku dashboard and select Create a New App. If you want to enter in an app name, it will need to be something other than Activity Overlord, as app names must be unique. If you don't put in an app name, Heroku will create one for you. And regardless, you can always go back and rename your app later. Now, 
You'll recall that we have a local JS file pointing to the MongoDB database hosted on MongoHQ. Since local.js will not be part of our repo because of .gitignore, we need some way of letting the Heroku server instance know about the MongoDB configuration, and we do this with environment variables. So let's go back into our adapters.js file, and I'm going to copy and paste the MongoDB configuration information from our local.js file into this adapters.js file. However, I'm going to replace where we currently have a string that contains the username, password, path, and port of our MongoDB instance on MongoHQ with an environment variable called db underscore URL. And that's going to be prefaced by process.env. So process.env is a node object that contains our environment, which also includes the environment variables that we'll add to it. So to add the environment variable to our Heroku instance, let's go back to the terminal and we'll type Heroku config set db underscore URL equals. And to get our path, I'll look in our local JS file and copy the path of our MongoHQ instance and paste it here. I'll also add the dash dash app and our app name activity overlord one to specify which app to associate with. So what have we accomplished? We've set db underscore URL on the remote Heroku instance using Heroku config set, and we're using that environment variable in our adapter.js file to point to our MongoHQ instance. So how is Heroku going to start Activity Overlord? We do that by creating a proc file in the root of our app. A proc file is a mechanism for declaring what commands are run by our app's dynos on the Heroku platform. More on dynos in a second. Let's go back into the code and add a new file name, proc file, with no extension. The file will have one line, web colon space node space app JS. Next, make sure you have sales Mongo in your package.json file and that it's installed in node modules. In fact, it's probably best to do an npm install to make sure you have all the dependencies installed. Now we need to link up the Heroku endpoint with our project. Let's go back to the Heroku dashboard and look under the settings tab. Go ahead and copy the git URL and then go back to the terminal and enter git remote add Heroku and then paste in that git URL here. Next we'll add all of our changes to git using git add and then commit them using git commit. Finally we're going to push the project by entering git push Heroku master. The last step before we fire up our browser and look at Activity Overlord is to set a dyno up for our app. Heroku suggests thinking of a dyno as a virtualized Unix container. In sum, it's the place where our app will run. To assign one dyno to our app, type Heroku PS scale with web equal to one. So let's go back into the browser, refresh the app, and log in. Everything looks to be working, however, open up the console and you'll see an error. WebSockets isn't working, but Socket.io is correctly failing over to long polling, so we still have a connection. As it turns out, Heroku has just started support for WebSockets, and you must enable it on an application instance. To do that, we'll go back to the console and type Heroku Labs enable WebSockets. It can take a second before WebSockets starts working. There we go. Also, I have had issues with it periodically failing and going back to web polling, but it is in beta, so we'll see how it improves over the coming weeks. Next, I want to take a look at moving our session and socket store to Redis. But first, why would we want to do this in the first place? Let's take a look at the following example. I have three instances of Heroku running Active Overlord on each instance. I use a load balancer to distribute the incoming requests across the three instances. Suppose we store sessions in memory, and on the first request, the load balancer sends us to instance A, where we authenticate and the session cookie set for that server instance. On the next request, we're sent to instance B, where we haven't yet authenticated and therefore won't be able to access the resources we would have had access to on instance A. Therefore, we need some way for the multiple instances of our application to share the same session store. This is why we're moving our session and socket store to Redis. So let's go ahead and set up Redis. We'll head back to the Heroku dashboard and our Activity Overlord instance. Select Add-ons and then Redis to go. 
Under Plan, select Nano or the free plan. Finally, select Add Nano for free. Go back to your instance of Activity Overlord and select the Redis to Go Nano under Add-on. Here you'll see the configuration path to our Redis instance. First, let's go into Activity Overlord and our sessions.js file. As the documentation suggests, I'm going to uncomment the adapter, host, port, DB, and password keys. We can then go back to our Redis to Go configuration file and copy and paste each value into the keys in session.js. Okay, let's see if this worked. I'll go back into the terminal and commit my changes and then push them to our Heroku instance. Now let's go back to the browser and try to log in. Even though that worked, the true test is whether our session ID is in the Redis database. To determine this, I'm gonna use the Redis CLI command line tool. To use this tool, we need to again use the host, port, and password to authenticate to the database. And once connected, I'll use the keys command passing in an asterisk as an argument to get all the keys. And there's our session key. Great. The Redis website has very useful documentation on other commands that you can use within this client. You might be asking yourself, I don't really want to put my Redis database credentials in my GitHub repo. And you know what? You would be right. That would be a very bad idea. So instead, we can use environment variables to set those credentials to our Heroku instance. Let's go back into session.js and change the values for the host, port, DB, and pass keys to environment variables. Now the server instance will be looking for those environment variables for the values. We'll set them on the Heroku instance the same way we did for db underscore url using Heroku config set. Now let's do the same for sockets. We'll go back to sockets.js. Similar to session.js, we'll uncomment the host, port, db, and pass keys, and then insert the environment variables for those values. Now I'm going to go back to the terminal and commit my changes again, and again push them to our Heroku instance. Now I'll go back to the browser and notice that I don't have to log in as my session is now maintained by Redis, whereas before we were doing things in memory, which required us to log in each time the server was lifted. I'll manually log out and log back in. And great, everything's working. Okay, the last thing I want to address with deployment is changing the value of the node underscore env variable from development to production. For sales, one of the biggest outwardly facing changes as a result of using production instead of development is that all of our CSS files will be combined and minified into one file. JavaScript files will also be combined and minified as well. In addition, many modules utilize node underscore env as a hook to determine whether to make changes based upon its value. We're going to actually set the environment variable in our proc file. So let's go over to the proc file and add node underscore env equal to production. I also discovered an issue with the ordering of our jQuery libraries in the grunt file. It was a simple fix, though, in that I just moved the jQuery and jQuery validate libraries to load before app.js. So now let's commit the changes and push them to Heroku. Back in the browser, I'll refresh the page and then look at the source to confirm that all my CSS is minified in one file and all my JavaScript is minified in one file. So now that we've successfully deployed Activity Overlord to Heroku, I want to address the workflow for moving forward with development. The repo for Activity Overlord will have the following setup for local.js, adapters.js, session.js, and sockets.js files. The local.js file will default to our local instance of MongoDB. To change that, just uncomment these lines that point to the hosted Mongo HQ instance. Since local.js will overwrite adapters.js, we can leave the existing code as is. Session.js will use the in-memory session store, but when you want to deploy, just uncomment the lines that configure Redis. The same holds true for the sockets.js configuration file. We've covered a bunch of material in this episode. I hope you find it helpful, and as always, thanks for watching.